Hi, I'm Natasha, the Education and Promotion Manager at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Land Care, or CIRCLE, which is based in Perth, Western Australia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a reptile which depends on us to keep its home healthy, clean and intact. You will learn about why the animal on which this soft toy is based is so unique and what we can do to ensure its survival. This species of turtle is endemic to the southwest corner of Western Australia, which means it can only be found here. They live in freshwater habitats, including rivers, lakes, dams, and natural and constructed wetlands. Its scientific name is Caladina collii, and its most recent common name is the Southwestern Snake Neck Turtle. It is called the Southwestern Snake Neck Turtle because of where it is found and because it has a long, snake like neck. When lining up its prey, the head sways slightly whilst pulled back in a snake like S shape before they strike out at lightning speed. Their strike speed is the fastest of any Australian freshwater turtle. The Southwestern Snake Neck Turtle has had lots of different common names in the past, and they all describe something about the turtle. It used to be called the Side Neck Turtle because it can't pull its head and neck back into its shell like other turtles do to protect themselves. So instead, it puts its neck around the side of and under its shell. It is often called the oblong turtle because whilst most turtles have a round shell, the southwestern snake neck turtle has an oval or oblong shaped shell. And the name you may know it by, the long neck turtle, is because unlike a lot of turtles, it has a very long neck. The southwestern snake neck turtle has names for each of its body parts. At the end of their long neck, they have their head on which they have two eyes, a mouth and two nostrils. Turtles use their long neck a bit like a snorkel, with the nostrils on the end allowing them to breathe whilst the rest of their body is still under the water. They don't have any teeth, but they have strong jaws and use the claws at the end of their legs for digging and breaking food apart. Their webbed feet are used for swimming and help them to move faster through the water, just like we do when we wear flippers while swimming. The shell is made up of bones and it grows with them, so they can't get a new one if something happens to it. The top of the shell is called the carapace and the bottom of the shell is called the plastron and they are joined by a bridge. The shell is covered in scoots, which are plates of skin made up of keratin, which is the same stuff that makes up our finger and toenails. Males have a longer tail than females, however the females are larger in size. The vent contains the reproductive organs of the turtles and in the females it is where the eggs will come out. So who knows the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? The main difference is that a turtle lives mostly in water whilst tortoises live on land. A turtle can live in fresh water like the southwestern snake neck turtle or in salt water like sea turtles. Freshwater turtles have webbed feet with claws. Marine or sea turtles have flippers. Both leave the water to lay their eggs. A tortoise lives on land. They have big clumpy feet and much more rounded shells. No tortoises live naturally in Australia. Southwestern snake neck turtles are considered the top predator in the aquatic feed chain, meaning nothing in the water wants to eat them. Adult turtles eat frogs, tadpoles, fish, marron and macroinvertebrates such as insects, crustaceans, snails and worms. They can even eat baby water birds. Hatchlings or baby turtles eat aquatic plants and midge and mosquito larvae. Male and female southwestern snake neck turtles get together from June to September to mate. When the weather is right, usually on a very overcast and cloudy day during September to January, the female will leave the wetland to go in search of a spot to lay her eggs. She might have to walk up to 800 metres from the water to find a suitable spot. When she finds a nice sandy spot, she lays between 2 and 16 eggs, which she covers with sand before she returns to the wetland. She can do this up to three times during a nesting season. The eggs will remain in the sand incubating for about 220 days, after which the turtles will hatch out of their eggs and walk back to the wetland. When they are born, the turtles are only very small, with a shell as big as a 20 cent coin, so they have a very long way to travel. One or two might make it back to the wetland alive and grow big enough to start the life cycle again. 
In the wild, southwestern snake-neck turtles can live for between 30 and 40 years. In the water, turtles are at the top of the food chain, so don't need to be worried about other animals wanting to eat them. Out of the water, however, the adults, babies and eggs are at risk of being eaten by feral and native animals, including foxes, dogs, black rats and birds such as ravens, ducks, cormorants and magpies. When moving around out of the water, turtles also have to watch out for road traffic and things that stop them from moving from place to place. Adults and babies can be run over as they cross roads, which are built too close to water bodies. Fences around wetlands and box-shaped curbs on the side of the road stop them from getting where they need to be. Another big problem for turtles are all the buildings being built on the wetlands they live in and pollutants entering the remaining wetlands. The places where they live are being destroyed to make way for houses and the water they swim in is being polluted by too many nutrients which cause algae blooms. Too much of that green slimy algae makes it difficult for turtles to swim and means they have less food available as the algae stops the light getting to the plants and uses up the oxygen in the water and this causes the plants and animals that turtles eat to die. So if you see a turtle when you are out and about, should you pick it up? Well, there are only two reasons you should pick up a turtle and only do so if your mum, dad or another adult is with you. The first reason is if they are in danger, such as when they are crossing a road. An adult can make sure it is safe to go onto the road and if it is, you can pick them up and take them to the other side of the road in the same direction in which they are travelling. Don't take them back to the wetland as they know where they are going and chances are it is a female that needs to find somewhere to lay her eggs. The second reason is if the turtle is hurt, such as with a cracked shell. In this case, put it in a box and take it to the nearest native animal rescue centre, which if you are in Perth, Western Australia, could mean visiting Native Ark in Coburn, or the Armadale Reptile Centre, or calling the Wildcare Helpline on 9474 9055, and they will direct you to someone who can help take care of the injured turtle. If you are picking up a southwestern snake neck turtle, hold it as shown in this photo. With your thumbs on the carapace or top of the shell and your fingers on the plastron or bottom of the shell so that the turtle's claws, head and neck are pointing away from you. One reason to hold the turtle like this is so that you can't be scratched. But the other reason is because southwestern snake neck turtles are a bit like skunks. They spray stinky stuff from near their tail if they become worried they might be hurt as a way of getting you to put them down. It's so stinky you would probably have to throw your clothes away if it gets on you, so it's better to face that part of the turtle away from you. To help protect the southwestern snake neck turtles, there are a couple of things you can do. Your school can become a Turtle Watch accredited school by going to the A squared E squared WA website. If you see a turtle while you're out and about, you can go to the Climate Watch website and record where and when you saw it. This will help the scientists and people who are looking after the turtles know more about them. But the main thing we can all do to help protect our unique southwestern snake neck turtles is to protect our wetlands, rivers and the surrounding bushland from pollution and development. The southwestern snake neck turtles and all of us here at the Phosphorus Awareness Project at Circle would like to thank you for listening.